I'm going to pause working on my boat and talk to you about a subject that is very important to me, the word faith. Did you know that 99% of the preachers get it wrong? The whole world has a false concept of faith, so we're going to deal with that. But <laughs> talking about faith, look at this boat I'm still working on. All right. Let me tell you a story from the Bible. There's a guy in the Bible named Job, very unusual character. Job lived in a time when there was no law, no Bible, no organized religion uh, that God organized. People might have had their own religion. He was probably, the book of Job was probably the first book ever written in the Bible. When you read the book of Job, you find no mention of the law or of the promises of God or of Abraham or the prophets or anything. So I think he was probably before Abraham as well. And he didn't live in the area where the Bible took place. The Bible said he was the greatest man of the East. Way back in the area of Iraq and Kuwait and that area is where Job came from. And he was a rich man. Job owned over 20,000 head of stock, animals, camels, goats, sheep, so forth, cattle. And he had 10 sons and daughters. So the Bible says there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, one that feared God and eschewed evil. So here's a man that had a fear of God. Now, but that doesn't mean scared of God. A fear of God is a, is a respect. It's the way that if government were what it ought to be, you'd feel towards law enforcement or the military. In other words, as long as you're obeying the law and doing what you ought to do, there's nothing to fear. Today there is, but there was a time when there wasn't. And uh, But if you just think about doing something crooked or illegal, you know you fear you fear the consequences. So Job feared God, and the Bible said he is shoe D. Well, that means he stayed away from it. Now, Job didn't have any Ten Commandments to tell him what evil was. He didn't have any prophets to preach to him. Job just, out of his own conscience, out of his own inner self, he divined what was truth and what was a lie. This tells us a lot about a man a, a heathen person, primitive, who doesn't have exposure to Christianity or Judaism, that people can arrive at an understanding of God through nature, Romans chapter one. Well, Job did that. And Job had four friends, very interesting group of people. And the, the whole book of Job is a discussion basically between these people about why Job ended up sick like he did afflicted heavily, all of his family killed, wiped out in a day's time, tornadoes, hurt, uh, strong winds, fire, enemy coming in, destroying them. All that happened, different places, uh, all in one day. His cattle all taken away. So Job was left stripped. He had nothing but a one complaining wife. All his property's gone in one day's time. And you know what Job said when they came and told him about it? Then Job arose and rent his mantle. That means he tore his garment, shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground. That sounds like a good response. And worshiped and said, Naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Now, why did this happen to Job? See, Job didn't know, but prior to this, the Bible records it in chapter one of Job. There came a day when the sons of God came before God to present themselves to him. That means all the angels, the cherubim, it was a gathering of the clans, all came to, I guess, a regularly scheduled board meeting in heaven. And Lucifer, who was a, now a fallen angel, a fallen cherub, Lucifer, who was a great sinner, walked in with the proceedings. And God said, where did you come from? 
And he said, well, I've been walking up and down in the earth, walking to and fro. Now we know in the New Testament, he was seeking whom he could devour. And so God bragged a little bit. He said, now, have you considered my servant Job that there's none like him in all the earth, a man that fears God and eschews evil? The devil said, yep, yeah, I've considered him. You see, this was an insult to the devil. Here the devil had wooed Adam and Eve to fall. He had he'd caused the whole world to fall into sin. And here was this one man in the middle of this crooked, godless world that was no blame in his heart. Without the Bible, without the knowledge of Jesus Christ, no blame. Job feared God and stayed away from all evil. And Satan answered God and said, yeah, I've considered him, but it's because you put a hedge around about him and about around everything he has. You won't let me mess with him. That's an interesting revelation that God, there's some people, not everybody, but there's some people God would come and just put a protective hedge around them so the devil can't get to them. So the tornadoes and storms can't get to them. So the enemy can't get them. So they are protected by God Almighty and they know it not. And so the devil said, if you take away all that he has, then he'll curse you to your face. Because Job, he was saying, Job really doesn't love you. He doesn't care about you. What Job cares about is all the blessings you've given him. Now, you know, that'd be a pretty good argument for the devil to make today about most people, about most Christians, in fact. And so God said something unusual must have freaked the angels out. He said, look, you can go and take everything he's got, wipe him out, reduce him to a homeless individual, and we'll see how it turns out. Now that's where we come to our subject, faith. God had faith in Job. See, the faith God had was not in his heart. The faith God had was in Job. In other words, God believed in Job. Why did he believe in Job? Because he knew him. He knew him, he knew his heart, and he had confidence that Job would love him, love God, apart from all the things. But in contrast, the devil didn't have any faith in God, and he had faith that Job would fail. You know, today, God has faith in you, if you're a Christian. He called you to be perfect and holy and without blame. He has faith in you. But Satan also has faith in you. He has faith that you will fail, that you'll surrender to pornography or godless activity or cursing or anger towards your wife or children, bitterness in this crazy world we live in. So God has faith, but so does Satan. And you're the one that's gonna decide which way this thing goes. Are you gonna satisfy the devil? Are you gonna satisfy God? That's the question I have to ask myself. So Satan took everything that Job had and Job fell down and worshiped God and said, I came naked, I'll leave naked. Nothing I can do about that. God gives, God takes away. Today, I hear Christians all the time when their child gets sick or their husband dies or something tragic happens, they say, why did God do it? Job never asked that question. You see, most people don't have faith in God. They believe that God blesses people that are good and punishes people that are evil. So Job's three friends come along, find him sitting on a pile of ashes, head shaved and sores. That's that picture, uh, show that picture to them right there. Uh, that comes out of our book, the faith book. That's a picture of Job with balls all over him. So Job has these balls from head to toe and they're runny, pussy sores. So he takes a piece of broken pottery and starts scraping the pus off like that. And so three friends come along and they tell him, Job, the reason this has happened to you is because you've been evil. You know, there's a general belief that good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. So if something bad happens, then God's punishing you. And the only reverse of that, Christians think, okay, I've been good. Why does God let this happen to me? I've not done any sin. Why is he punishing me? My grandmother was a good woman. Why did God let that happen to her? No faith in God. And so as Job sat on that pile and they stood over him and told him he needed to repent, 
Job just stayed faithful to God. And Job knew his own heart too. He knew that he hadn't been sinning. He knew he hadn't been slipping around doing things he shouldn't do. He knew that his heart was pure towards God. And he felt like probably God did do this to him, not knowing it was Satan. But you know, Satan can't do anything God doesn't let him do, just as in that illustration there. And then there's a passage of scripture that says this, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. So God said, I'm going to judge Israel. I'm going to judge the city. And even if Job and Daniel and Noah were there in the city with all of their righteousness, they wouldn't be able to deliver anyone except themselves. Now, that doesn't mean they'd go to heaven based on their righteousness. It means they would deliver themselves from the judgment that was coming based on their righteousness. Now, Job was not able to be delivered from the judgments that Satan brought on him when God allowed it. But God says, if Job were here today, when I judge Jerusalem, he would deliver his soul from this judgment that's coming by his own righteousness. The saints of God are gonna be delivered from this world by their righteousness when the rapture takes place. And all the saints that get delivered will be the ones that are saved and all the saved will be delivered and no one else will be. Be taken up and escape the great tribulation. Now, I'm thankful that I have a, a borrowed righteousness. I have an imputed righteousness. I have a righteousness that I didn't earn. I've tried to live it, but I've, I've not... I've not lived it perfectly at all. And that righteousness is the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which God gave to all those that believe. So if you have faith in God today, then you trust him fully. You trust him with your health, your wife, your children. You're not gonna blame him. You're not gonna accuse him. You're not gonna be upset. You're not gonna wonder why. You're not gonna ask why. You're gonna accept the will of God in your life knowing that God does all that which is good, works all things together for good to those that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. I'll get my tech man, put that book up there, okay? That's my faith book right there. And uh, it has 65 stories. Job is just one of them. And uh, they're all on faith. Some of them are personal stories that tell you about casting out devils, tell you about miracles, people being raised from the dead, things I've personally experienced and seen or witnessed or firsthand or secondhand in my life. So this is a fascinating book, one that has something, uh, a truth in it that you've never been exposed to probably. I've not run into anyone that's been exposed to it. So get this book and read it. You'll be blessed all over. Okay, I'm gonna go back to working on my boat.